The key part of the majority of cellular respiration takes place in structures called mitochondria. But what actually are these structures and how may they have developed in the first place? Well, aerobic respiration is the most common form of cellular respiration and also the most efficient at releasing energy whilst also producing the least amount of waste to be dealt with. Inside the cells are structures called organelles. Like organs within the body, like the liver and the heart, each type of organelle has its own function necessary to the operation of the cell as a whole. Within the cell, the majority of the respiration takes place in an organelle of the cells called mitochondria. Within the cell, there can be anywhere from 100 to over 3,000 of these, depending upon the needs of the cell, especially in regard to respiration and energy use. In humans, things like Liver and muscle cells generally have the most of these. These mitochondria resemble prokaryotic bacteria and indeed may have their origin closely related to them. In the mitochondria, they even reproduce in a way similar to cell division. And if all of the mitochondria are removed from a the cell, then it cannot reproduce any new ones. And during the division of mitochondria, like normal cell division, the DNA within the mitochondria first copied and then the body stretches out and it's pinched in the middle and then splits in two. However, the DNA replication isn't identical to cell division and there can be different alleles in each of the copied mitochondria. On the outside of the mitochondria is a double membrane. The outer membrane holds the shape of the organelle and allows most substances through the membrane at gaps in the wall guarded by translocase of the outer membranes or TOMS for short, to enable pouring proteins and other substances needed to enter into the structure. The inner membrane is more restrictive, and water, oxygen and carbon dioxide are the substances which find it easy to penetrate the barrier. The membrane also has many folds in it, meaning it has a very large surface area for the volume it occupies. The matrix within the inner membrane is like a gel-like substance which has far less water in it than the surrounding cell, and floating in it are mitochondrial DNA, matrix granules, and ribosomes. So here, what's known as the citric acid cycle, or the Krebs cycle, takes place. It's so basically the production of adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, from adenosine diphosphate, or ADP. The ATP stores potential energy, can release this energy where it is needed in the cell. For instance, large amounts of ATP are needed to make a muscle contract. The mitochondrial DNA contains only 37 genes, consisting in humans of around about 16,500 base pairs. Well, it seems a lot, it's not very many. About a third of these genes produce the enzymes needed in the Krebs cycle. The remaining genes are involved in the transfer ribonucleic acid and ribosomal ribonucleic acid. This does mean that any mutation in the mitochondrial DNA can be problematic, both for the cell and for the organism as a whole. The ribosomes produce various proteins as instructed by the ribonucleic acid as needed to keep the mitochondria functioning. And the matrix granules are likely involved in osmosis, reducing the amount of water in the mitochondria. But it isn't well understood at the moment. So that's a brief look at the mitochondria within a cell.